as Deacon John was proclaiming the gospel there, I just was, was thinking how great it is being Catholic. The world says Easter's one day. The church says, no, we're going to say, we're going to turn one day into eight days and just celebrate Easter for eight days, the octave. And as we start off the Easter season, we'll spend this weekend and next weekend in the upper room where the resurrected Christ appears to the, to the disciples who are scared, they're confused. And one of the focuses that we see in the readings, both this weekend's gospel and next weekend's gospel, we see the focus, a focus beyond the wounds of Jesus. Jesus is very deliberate and he's very forthcoming in drawing attention to his wounds. He says this week, we'll hear it again next week, look here, look at my hands. Like put your, put your hand here into my side. So wounds this week, wounds next week. Like I'm, there's a part of me that's like, we just got out of Lent for Pete's sake. It's been nothing but kind of wounds, Stations of the Cross, we had passed a Good Friday with the scourging and Jesus being crucified, wounds, 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 all of Lent. And now the first two Sundays of Easter, we're gonna hear more about wounds? Yes, Jesus draws our attention to his wounds because these are not ordinary noon wounds. These are glorious wounds. Question to ask is, well, why do these wounds remain? Jesus just conquered sin and death. He gloriously rose from the dead. You would think that the, the resurrected Christ, his body would be free from wounds. Why wounds in his side, his hands and his feet still? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas asked this question. Why, why, would, why in the world would the resurrected Christ, his body, still have wounds? And he gives five answers. I just want to look at three of them this morning, three of them of which are especially applicable here on this Divine Mercy Sunday. They can be summarized in these three ways. The glorious wounds are used to plead on our behalf. The glorious wounds are as a badge of honor, and the glorious wounds rebuke counterfeit mercy. So first, Thomas Aquinas says that Jesus' wounds remain. The resurrected Christ continues to have wounds that when he pleads for us to the Father, he may always show the manner of death he endured for us. So it's a beautiful image there. You think of the image of the Son in heaven, maybe on judgment day, you got the Father there who's judge, there we are, and Jesus is between us, standing between us, the Father and us, and he's standing right in front of us. As the Father sees us, Jesus just steps in front and he says, look here, look at my hands, look at my feet, look at my side, remember that you sent me. When you look at them, remember that you sent me, remember what I did. How do I get into heaven? As I've said over and over again the last number of 10 months here, how do we get into heaven? It's not by what we do and pointing to, pointing to these things and this that I've done, these good things that I've done. We get in because Jesus stands before us and he shows the Father, he pleads on our behalf and says, look at my hands, look at my wounds. Because he presents to the Father his glorious wounds. So many people, so many people ask me, Father, how could God forgive? I, I understand God's merciful, but how could he forgive what I did, specifically this? Or how could I, how could I, how can I forgive myself? Jesus was sent and he died for the ungodly and is now seated at the right hand of the Father so as to intercede for us to plead on our behalf. Romans chapter eight, verse 34 says, who will condemn? It is Jesus who died, rather who rose, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. That's what Jesus does in the confessional. When we're in the confessional and we're confessing our sins, Jesus is there just to the Father. As you hear these, 
Father, like, look here. Look at my wounds. Look at my side. Remember what I did. Look at my glorious wounds. Secondly, Thomas Aquinas says, the resurrected Christ continues to have wounds because he wears them as an everlasting trophy of his victory. So we just heard, right, Jesus, and we'll hear again next week, Jesus appears in the upper room and says, peace be with you. And then right after that, verse 20 says, when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. It's, it's kind of like, hey guys, gathers amongst his buddies and hey guys, take a look at this. Look, look, look here. He almost wears him as a, as a badge of honor. You think of a bunch of high school kids getting together, they're kind of talking and they're showing each other their different scars they got when they were little kids. Hey guys, look at under my chin. One time when I was five years old, I jumped off the 10 foot coffee table and I got a gash here. You see this? I needed to get five stitches. Blood was all over the place. I survived. His buddy says, dude, that's nothing. Take a look at this. When I was 10, my brother shot me with a BB gun. BB gun. I needed 10 stitches. Now those kids that are here, like I'm not condoning these things, right? I don't want to do those. But it's important, or maybe similar, like you get a group of veterans served in Vietnam or World War II and they're sitting around their buddies and they're, having, and, and, and they're drinking beer and they're showing their, their battle wounds, their scars, rolling up their, their pants and saying, look here, right here, this thigh, you see this? piece of shrapnel went through my thigh. The doctor said, the medic said, I almost lost my leg. I almost died because of this. But I didn't die. I didn't lose my leg. Pointing to it as a badge of honor. This is what Jesus does. This is what he does for us. This is what he's doing. He continually mocks death by having his wounds. He mocks Satan by saying, look, <laughs> Satan, you didn't win that day when you thought you won. Here I am, and here's these wounds. It's this is a continual reminder to, to taunt him and to mock him. Satan, you don't have power anymore. Sin, you have no power. Death, you have no power. When we're united with Christ, he's got no power. The horrific wounds are a trophy for Jesus to hold up. And they're a badge of honor, those glorious wounds, because of what it is that he accomplished. And the implications then for us, and what that means for us, is that now our wounds, our deep wounds caused by, caused by sin, sometimes when we fall hard, and in our past when we've fallen hard, and the shame that oftentimes accompanies with that, and our desire to hide it, and to keep it, is the, is the exact opposite thing to do. It's rather to present them and be quick to show them to him. Because when he heals and he restores because of his glorious wounds and his divine mercy. And even a step further, we can say that like we can, the implication here is that we can look at our past, the things that we've done, and would it be better to look and say, would it be better that we wouldn't have sinned? Absolutely, of course. But because of what Jesus did, reconciling us to the Father, in a way I can say, I can look back in the past and say, look, look here, look at what he did. Look at what he accomplished for me. We can point to the wound, not, as so, not, not to hold up the sin as a badge of honor, but to, to hold up what it is that he did as a badge of honor. To say that I'm healed now. I'm different now because of what it is that he's done. I could have died from that. I did die from that. But now I'm back and I have this to show for it, for what he did. And that's the power of witness. It's the power of witness for someone who, who has those things in the past or currently that can't look back and point because it's just too tough, it's too hard, it's too painful and they can't look back and point to it. But when they hear us look back and they hear us talk about our, maybe our faults and our failings and say that we can look at it and say, look at it. Look at what he did. Look at what he's accomplished. Look at these glorious wounds 
of which that he has. And lastly, Thomas Aquinas, he says, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, continues to have wounds. He says that on the judgment day, he may rebuke them with their just condemnation. That is to say, the wounds remain in the resurrected Christ so as to say no to counterfeit mercy, which we must say no to. We must deny and reject counterfeit mercy at all costs. Verse 25, we just read, says this. This is Thomas speaking. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and I put my finger into it and I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas, of course, gets a bad rap, right? Doubting Thomas. Should he have doubted? No, he shouldn't have doubted. But Thomas knew what to look for. He knew to look for the wounds. He knew that the resurrected Christ on Easter Sunday, he knew that he must have the wounds of Good Friday. Otherwise, it would be counterfeit mercy. Counterfeit mercy does not take sin seriously. And our culture is a culture that is more and more promotes the idea of just shrugging off guilt. And it promotes just trivializing sin. Right, that mercy thing, right? Mercy, mercy's out there, like, because of, like, everyone's good. Everyone gets a pass. Everyone's actions get a pass. And that's what the fog of relativism does. Everyone's actions are fine, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And the culture, our culture, is doing an extremely good job in removing the sting of guilt and getting rid of judgment. And the sting of guilt cannot be removed. Judgment cannot be pushed aside. Sin cannot be trivialized. And the, this promotion of counterfeit mercy is ultimately, it's crippling to the human person. And it's crippling to society, our society, when counterfeit mercy is promoted. Because counterfeit mercy does not allow a person a chance to repent. Everything is just fine, right? Mercy. And then there's, therefore, there's no pull to repent. And then, therefore, change doesn't happen. And that's the whole point of Easter as we celebrate Easter, the resurrection is the whole point of Easter is that I can change. I have the power to change. My wounds can be resurrected. If not, with counterfeit mercy, it does not happen. The wounds of Christ, his glorious wounds, express the truth about mercy. And they defend the integrity of mercy by proclaiming the reality of sin. Jesus died and rose from the dead and he now has glorious wounds. Wounds of which that he uses to plead on our behalf to the Father. Wounds of which that he holds up as a trophy of victory and a badge of honor. Wounds of which that say no and reject counterfeit mercy. Our only response to his glorious wounds is to give our life to him.